Hey tubers, me again. It's been a minute since I put one out, but I did find an interesting scenario. So we're dealing with Echo SRM 225 right here. Uh, he says it's had a problem with spark. That's what that's what he believed the problem was to be. So I got to recreate everything the way uh, as it came in. Everybody say good morning to Supervisor Jax, my melon wall. Uh, okay, so here's the deal. It when it came in, I asked if anybody had worked on it. He's like, no, maybe just a spark plug. To look right down in here. Can you see that primary lead coming from the quilt? No, not unless I get my fingers out of the way. Hold on, I'm gonna get these things out of my. Anyways, it's been crushed. Very, very from on that side and on that side. When it came in, that lead was down underneath it here, uh, pinched underneath that isolator block and that, that top cover. So I rescued that, put it back up through. Uh, this is all on here because when I went to pull the boot, you see sometimes you get those ones that just stick on there so bad that it pulled right out. So anyways, there we go. The long and the short of it. I take and I put this spark tester on here. I'm going to put you right on top of this uh, tester. Come on. Right there. You're looking for the glow. Okay. When I go to pull it over. You're looking for the glow to show up right there. Let me get this out from underneath. Okay. That means that it's it's actually producing spark. You got the switch off, and I'll pull it a couple, three times, see if we can catch it. I saw it, but it's right down here on the bottom, very faint. Okay. So it is making spark. And yet the machine won't run. So now, get this off. Right beside this, zoom out. Right beside this, I have an echo blower. Now we're going to take this one off. I'm going to put the tester on here. Put that in there. Now I want you to watch again. Zoom. Daylight's coming right through there. Should still be able to see it. Okay. So now you're going to watch for this one. So much more intense. Okay. So the problem with this bad chicken is that that pinched primary right there for the coil will not generate enough spark in order to make this thing run. So as luck would have it, Ken, Kenny, from Ken Small Engines, Mr. Mowatall, he just replaced a coil on a video I saw yesterday um, for this same model, 225. Might have been a trimmer, a weed whacker. No, I think it was a weed whacker. He replaced that coil with OEM. Uh, seven, it was in the $70 range. He says, not too bad, not too bad. Well, I don't know. 75 bucks sounds like a lot to me. And... Plus, you got to take and put whatever, 40, 50 bucks on top of that 
you know, for anything else, any other incidentals that you, that you might need to do. That's pretty expensive. I think it is anyways. So these are all just T27s. I'm gonna, I'll move the camera around for you. Hold on. Yeah, we're not doing any editing. We're gonna keep this under 10 minutes. I'm gonna take move that. Move this. Here we are. Real time. Sunday morning. No editing. And then he went through a little bit of an ordeal with washers and uh, what do you call it? Spacers. There's none of that on this one. So there's a kill wire. Take that off. Push that off to the side. And take in one screw out. One screw out. I'm gonna kick this out of here. Don't really need that leaf. This is the OEM. That's the original. Here's a replacement. Same body color. He said the blue one on his video had was a rev limiter. Okay. Got a handy dandy business card ready to go. We're gonna take in put this new coil somewhere close to where it needs to be. Get the thread started. And I usually just reach down in there with a screwdriver or my fingers and rotate that flywheel to get it somewhat close. So when I'm pushing up on it to make sure that it has a sufficient air gap. There's that one. that I want to spin this around looking for the magnets should be the next one's coming around yep feel the compression okay look over here down in there you can see the magnets are getting ready to come up underneath that coil. So we're going to take and slide this card down under there. Pull it over here so I can see. That looks about right. Now I'll just use that. Hand bit here. We're going to loosen them. They should just go click as it drops down the magnet. It did not click, but that's okay. Tight. Tight. Let me see if we can get that out of here. Spin. Spin, spin, okay. So it goes through. Kill switch. Sorry guys, the camera is like right there. There's a kill switch. There's a coil. Put that on there. And let's just see if it'll fire off. I did end up putting a new primer bulb on it. There's a few other little bugs going on with this, but primer bulb is picking up like it should. All right. There's the old coil. If you got any questions, go ahead and ask, you guys. So this, this coil is from this company. There's the part number for 
SRM225, 20 bucks. 20 bucks. So let's see if we can get this thing to fire off. Switch is off. There's that. Choke is on. I think it has not been run in a while. Take the choke all the way off. Got my dog running around out there. So, what else do I need to be looking at? Set that adjustment. Okay, she's a runner. So that right there, if you're working on your own stuff, it's you just saved yourself whatever. 55 55 bucks just on those parts. And then also, um, Kenny is probably a lot more detailed than I am. And I, this will be very interesting to hear from you guys in the comments. Because the way that I I don't use a tachometer, I go and it just just it's called uh just lean or like just rich of peak so you would take and you would run it until it gets you know to your highest rpms and then back the then back the high speed jet off just a little bit to where you hear the rpms drop right and then that also gives you a little bit of extra protection because now your fuel is running uh, really rich. So don't make the same mistake. Get this thing off of here. It feeds. Let's see what I can see. The plug wire goes through here. Come up through the top. And they've always done this, I don't know why. But this is this is Echo. Seems to be working pretty well for them because they've done a million of these. And then it loops back on itself. Get that cover right where it needs to be. Push the spark plug down where it is. There's only two screws. two different ones. There's metal. Oops, where are you? There's metal and there's plastic. That case up there is metal, so the fine thread goes up there. And then the plastic one goes back into the over here where the pull starter is. So that one goes right there. Okay. So it's just that simple to, to switch out the coil, provided that you've done the diagnosis correctly and you know that's what it is. Okay. That's it. Guys, let me know what you think. Are you going to spend... If it's your own machine, you don't have to pay somebody to, to do all the other stuff. Because this one came in. Had to replace that primer bulb. Replace the coil. I'll still have to adjust that carburetor. Uh, it came in. There, it was missing the screw for where you actually take and put in the grease. So that was all. I had to clean all that stuff out. Blah, blah, blah. So if you're going to pay this, generally around here in Arizona, uh, 
it's like $65 just to drop it off. Then it would have been whatever for OEM, $75. But, I don't know, primer bulb, this, that, and the other thing. Pretty close to $200. 190 200 bucks. You gonna pay that kind of money to get the thing going again? I don't know. You tell me. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. It's been a minute, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. That's it. I'm done. I'm out.